For the last 50 years, three German automakers have dominated the luxury performance sedan segment. Audi, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz. The trio has spent the better part of half a century battling for sports car supremacy, both on and off the track. But in the last decade or so, there's been a shift. A new group of sporty four-doors have popped up from some of the most unlikely places, and they're taking the fight directly to the Germans. So, here's what we got. We got Acura TLX Type S, Genesis G70 3.3T, how do you think these are gonna stack up against the Audis and the BMWs of the world? People still seem to be pretty into the idea of a different kind of sporty luxury sedan. Today's gonna to be a very interesting matchup for sure. What do you say we go drive on? Can we get some pie first? All right, okay, cool. Since these two cars represent alternative choices in the 350 plus horsepower sports sedan class, testing them on an alternative driving route seems like the best idea. We'll start our day in the mountains near Julian, California, before plunging to one of the deepest spots in North America, the desert shores of Salton Sea at 200 feet below sea level. Tight curves, wide open straights, frost heaves, and heavy crosswinds lie in between, giving us a great test of these cars' performance credentials. Acura TLX Type S. This is, um, it's an interesting sporty sedan. It kind of has a split personality in the sense of you can really drive this thing in normal and comfort mode and just feel like you're in a normal sedan most of the time. And I think that's a good thing for a lot of people who are buying in this segment. Now, when you notch it over to Sport or if you hold the dial and turn it all the way to Sport Plus, then you can instantly feel this thing tightening up. And you can even hear, listen to that exhaust note. It is still a little underpowered, I think compared to what the Genesis gives you. Only 355 horsepower, which uh, is, a, is a relatively, like it's an okay number, but it just doesn't feel that powerful from a standstill. Now the secret of the TLX Type S really is this super handling all wheel drive system. This is really balanced at all four corners and it does a really good job of sort of yanking you out of a corner when you go into it hard. Whereas the Genesis will maybe get a little too tail happy. It's really nice when you get on it. Again, it's not the most powerful motor in the world, but it actually has a nice linear kind of stream when, you, when you're going fast. I like the sort of powertrain and the feel of this car, I think more than the Genesis, which can be a little unrefined at times. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with the Type S badge. It does feel like it is consistent across their lineup. And I think that's what buyers are gonna really like about this car. This is my first time behind the wheel of the G70 in a really long time, and I have to say, I'm really pleasantly surprised. Uh, the last time I drove one, I remember having a lot of fun, but I don't remember it actually being that composed. This, on the other hand, feels uh, like really well put together, and, and the handling dynamics are really, really nice. I will say this is a very intimate, and some would probably say cramped, sports sedan, especially for people in the back seat. There's not a ton of leg room and there's not a ton of headroom, but by and large, this is still a pretty enjoyable place to be. The materials are really lovely. The quilting might be a little much for some, and I think I might be in that camp, but generally this is a very comfortable, interesting cabin, and I don't have too much negative to say about it. I also have very little to complain about the twin turbocharged V6 under the hood. You'd kind of expect the G70 3.3T to be a little bit more restrained and a little bit more relaxed, but the way that this particular engine builds speed, the way that it makes power just feels so much more exciting and bombastic, almost like something out of an M3. It's obviously not that powerful, but just the way that it builds power and speed is really, really fun and super thrilling. Overall, I really like the G70. I think it's a genuinely pleasant sports sedan. It feels beautiful when you're kind of just cruising down the road like this, but at the same time, it's nice and taut, so if you want to throw it into a corner, it feels like it can take that amount of abuse as well. It has been a while, though, since I've driven the TLX in any kind of sporting fashion, so let's pull over and switch cars, and we'll see how the cards fall. All right, halfway through our drive to Salton Sea, how are you feeling so far? So far, so good. I'm really liking this car. I haven't driven it in a while, um, and I was worried that it was gonna be too much like the standard TLX, which is kind of what it felt like when I drove it the first time. But when you notch it over to Sport or Sport Plus, it actually comes alive really nicely. It tightens up, it feels really sharp. 
And then I love this all-wheel drive system. The super handling is probably one of the best out there. I really like it so far. This thing, however, this is kind of always ready to play. Like, even when you're kind of just coming away from a stop sign, there's a ton of power and a ton of torque, and the turbos light up really quick. So it's really, really pretty lively, which I love. But I definitely am interested to see how this one drives now that we've gone up here. I'd love to see going back down how this one does. <laughs> I really like this sedan. I think it drives really, really well. Um, the engine definitely doesn't feel as uh, sassy as it would in the G70. It's surprising. They're both three-ish liter V6 engines. They both have turbochargers and they could not feel more different in terms of their character. In a lot of ways, the G70 is going to feel uh, sharper for better and for worse. It's going to be really twitchy. Uh, the throttle isn't very easy to modulate. You kind of get a lot of boost all at once, but that does add to the thrill factor. Whereas in the Type S, you really kind of have to be caning it hard. The thing is though, once you do start to push it, it really comes alive. This is kind of showing me that you can have fun in the TLX. I think a huge part of that is the uh, super handling rear differential. So this is an all wheel drive car. It is front biased. And so you do still get about 60% of your weight over the front axle. But the way that the super handling all wheel drive system doles power out to the rear axle removes a lot of the understeer that you might expect, especially when you're coming out of a corner. It definitely requires some getting used to, and it's not the traditional sports sedan recipe, but that doesn't change that it is a very entertaining way to cut up a canyon road. The first thing you notice when you get in the G70 compared to being in the Acura is just how much more premium it feels in here. The quilted leather is a really nice touch and everything just feels hefty and premium. There's a lot of nice aluminum. It does feel a little kind of looser. Part of that comes down to the steering. They did a new variable ratio steering rack that almost feels too heavy at times and too light at other times but it's just vague in general. But I think where the, the G70 has a leg up over the TLX is the engine. This 3.3 liter twin turbo is much, much stronger than the TLX Type S is off the line. Um, and it has more power on paper, 365 compared to 355 in the TLX. It's not that much, but it is definitely noticeable when you're driving it. I think with the G70, you are gonna have to settle a little bit if you want a performance sedan, because this is certainly more on the side of luxury, but you do get a really nice engine and you get a nice balanced chassis when you are just kind of pedaling around town. Some of that comes down to the fact that Genesis doesn't have its own performance sub-brand like Acura and some of these other vehicles do, because I think that with the right performance division in mind. Genesis could do something really special with this car and really interesting with their lineup as a whole. This formerly dry inland sea suddenly refilled after a floodgate on the Colorado River burst at the turn of the 20th century. And within a few years, vegetation and farming returned to the Salton Basin, as well as a vibrant tourism scene. It's pretty crazy to think that this was like the spot to go to for a long time. Celebrities coming out from Palm Springs and hanging out here. After decades of agricultural runoff, however, Salton is saltier than ever, and many of its fish and bird residents can no longer survive the harsh conditions. Making matters worse, the water line is receding, exposing residents to acrid chemicals like DDT, lead, and chromium found deep in the seabed. I don't really know what I expected when we drove out here. I wasn't expecting it to be this big. I thought it was going to be like a, like a decent sized lake, but it legit, you can't see the end of it. It legit is a sea in the middle of the desert. Suck pee pee. <laughs> it's good advice for us all, Jeff. The raw, uncommon beauty of the area and the friendliness of its canine residents aside, we're here primarily to see if one of these cars does a better job of challenging the sports sedan status quo. It's time to wake up and pick a winner. Okay, so let me tell you what I really like about the G70. Yeah. One, I think this is a good looking sedan. Yeah. I think the two line design language works pretty well, gets a little busy on the front end, sure. but in general, the proportions are nice and the design looks really good. Two, I really like the interior and I especially like the quilted leather that they put in there. Honestly, the interior is nice in this car. You, like you said, the touch points are all really good. The materials are great. Uh, it just feels a little dated to me. The size of the screen, the half digital, half analog tachometer uh, gauge display is a little fussy to me. So I much prefer the interior of the TLX. Um, I think it's just a little bit more modern. But as a driver's car, I sort of walked away 
wanting to drive this one more than I did the yeah. G70 for the most part, especially through those canyon roads. Yeah. It just has really nice balance. The all wheel drive is great. You know what I actually wanna do? I wanna take the engine from the G70 and I wanna put it in the TLX. I agree, especially when you're kind of driving around at a moderate pace. This engine has a ton more character, but at the same time, the TLX does come alive when you are really pushing that throttle in there. And the sound of this engine, everything about this thing when you're really pushing hard, kind of fell into place. Let me ask you before we pick a winner, okay. was there a car at the beginning of this test that you sort of thought might win, having not driven them back to back in a while? Yeah, I was definitely kind of leaning a little bit more toward the G70. You know, it's a rear drive architecture, feels more avowedly sports sedan to me. Yeah, I agree. I really liked the G70 when I drove it a few years ago, and it was really highly regarded as a luxury sports sedan yeah. and as a new entrant in this class. But after driving them back to back today, yeah. I think we kind of came to an agreement on which one is the winner. Yeah, I think we have. On these roads, on this day, the TLX Type S was kind of the car that both of us wanted to drive quickly. You definitely are gonna pay a price. The G70 is smoother and quieter and more refined when you're kind of just cruising down the road. And you mentioned that it's got a very nice interior with great materials, but this isn't a luxury sedan test. This is a luxury sports sedan test, right? Yeah, it is. And I think we have a winner. TLX Type S? TLX Type S. Good deal. There it is. <laughs> From the apple pie a la mode breakfast to the hauntingly desolate sunset over the desert sea, it was a day full of surprises. And that applies especially to our winner, the Acura TLX Type S.